Hello, my name is Steven Twig, and I'm a fourth year student in the Aspire Lab. Uh, today, I'll be talking to you about the RISC-V assembly test infrastructure. Specifically, we'll be focusing on the RISC-V tests and RISC-V tests ENV uh, repositories uh, on our UC bar, UCB bar organization on GitHub. Uh, first and foremost, is if you go into RISC-V tests slash ISA and then run the make command, you'll see a bunch of files be created. Um, with extensions .s, .dump, .hex, et cetera. Uh, one of them will have names such as rv64ui-v-add. Now, these, these uh, are contrived of three parts. The, that first part, rv64ui, defines what we call the test virtual machine, whereas the second part, the v, defines what we call the target environment, and the third part, the add, just defines what the test was and how it was described earlier. Uh, for the purposes of using the tests, the ones without the extensions are the actual binaries that you feed into your environment. The .dump files would be if you wanted to review the tests compiled themselves, and the .hex is if you wish to read the hex version of that binary. Now, I'll be going into these details further into the presentation. However, the test virtual machines, in essence, defines what capabilities you need the to test program to have with regards to what processor instructions you need, kind of how the, what the memory is set up, et cetera. There's a separate folder in RISC-V test slash ISA for each, of these, uh, for each of these test virtual machines. Next, the target environment defines what the surrounding test system needs to look like. For example, if you're running with one core, multiple cores, using virtual memory, using physical memory, or taking interrupts every so often. In RISC-V test environment, you will find a folder for each of these target environments. Now, going into more detail on the test virtual machines, they provide the following features. The set of allowed instructions, they show where in the test you will start and end execution, how data, test data will be input, and how you will output test data in the test signature. An interesting feature that's not, very, that's not described in many other places is that if you, when running any of these environments through Spike, through our C++ emulators in the Rocket test repository, if you append the plus signature equals in some file name to that test, at the end of execution, the front-end server will print out to that file name uh, a, a listing in memory. Uh, a list, it will print out what the memory locations looked like inside of the, inside, in between the risk RV test data begin and RV test data end. Don't worry, I'll have an um, uh, example later. Now, looking further into what the possible test virtual machines are, they are, the, you stipulate which one you want with a top of file macro, which starts with RV test underscore RV, and then whether you're using 32 or 64 bit instruction decoding, and then U for user space or S for supervisor. Furthermore, if you're in writing a user space test, meaning you will only be using user space opcodes, you can further stipulate to turn on the floating point or vector unit or any other accelerator by stipulating F or V. If you say S, it is assumed that all of these items will already be turned on for you. The idea here is that when you are writing your test, you will include the smallest amount of instructions possible in order to keep the test as general as possible. For example, if you're not using the vector unit or floating point unit in the assembly test that you are writing, you will not want to turn on those devices in order to keep the test run simple. Uh, future work that we're looking at is that you could also incorporate a static tester, a static checker into your assembly test building suite that would verify in all the emitted instructions based on what the top of file macro was that you're not emitting any extra extraneous instructions. If you look further into some of the test macros that are included in these test virtual machines, you'll find there's an RV test pass and RV test fail macro, which will automatically end execution of your program for you regardless of where you are in the, in the assembly test. The, this ends the program by signaling to the front end server through the two host register uh, the appropriate execution code. Now, this shouldn't be relevant for most of you, assuming you continue to use the macros. However, if you do wish to write your own tests without the macros, you should know one small uh, feature of the two host register. The least significant bit of this register uh, indicates whether the message you are sending to the front end server is to execute a system call or actually ask for termination with an exit code. Uh, zero if it's a call because it's going to be a pointer, or one for termination. Thus, if you look into the RV test fail and RV test pass macros, they, they, test, they shift the error code to the left by one and then set that lowest order bit to one. Failure to do this will cause some somewhat strange results. 
Now, let us run through a simple test uh, that is provided in the readme of the uh, RISC-V test repository. Uh, first, at the top is a simple inc an include statement to the RISC-V test.h header file. This will hook into the target environments, the details of which I'll explain next. The next line is the, RV the macro rv test rv 64 u This defines which test virtual machine we wish to use by the program. And in this case, it means we are going to be using the full suite, the, we're going to be using the full suite of uh, the integer codes in user space. Below that, we have rv test code begin, which tells the linker that this is where we're going to start, start execution of the assembly test, followed by some actual test code, which in this case writes some data to x2 and posts it to memory. And then uh, the RB test pass, and then assuming that everything goes through, we'll hit the RB test pass macro, and this will terminate the program. Uh, then we have a fail branch target with RB test fail, which will send a failure opcode to the front end server upon program termination. And then RB test code end, which just tells the linker that we've cleaned up test execution. The next half of the file uh, defines what data we need to run the program. Uh, input data, so for just regular data that will not be dumped by the front end server in the signature, you can just use the regular assembler directive dot data with dot align commands, and then whatever test data you have at whatever memory locations. Uh, notice here, however, we have RB test data and RB test data end. And what this will do is all of the, in this case, the, just the one double word will be dumped by the front end server to the signature test file for the comparison by the user later. Next, we'll move on to what the four target environments are inside the RISC-V test target environments. They are the physical, physical multicore, physical interrupt, and virtual. The physical, which in, your, in the uh, generated binaries will be indicated by a P, simply uses physical memory and only boots one core. It's the simplest one that we have, and actually all of the other three will derive some elements of the execution from it. Physical multicore. Is, very, is similar to physical P. However, it will boot all, all of the cores that you have instantiated in design uh, and not just the zeroth core. This is also a special environment because most of our tests are written to either run on physical or physical multi-core, but usually not both. Finally, physical interrupt, which is, a sub, which is a, an extension of the physical P target environment, will also only allow core zero to boot, run in physical memory, However, every 100 cycles, a timer interrupt fires, which just saves and restores some state. <laughs> Finally, the virtual target environment, which is slightly more interesting, will run the entire program in virtual memory space and includes inside of its files a small kernel for handling the virtual memory item. Again, similar to many of the other environments, only Core 0 is allowed to boot for this, for this test. Now that I have described what the test virtual machines are and the target environments described, I will do a quick overview of the RISC-V test repository. If you open up the RISC-V test repository, you should see a submodule link to the RISC-V test M, which is uh, called ENV, uh, that links to the RISC-V test environments, uh, and then a folder called ISA. And if you go into the folder called ISA, there will be another subfolder called macros, which contain in themselves some header files which describe some various other uh, assembler and preprocessor defines for quickly describing assembly tests. Then, more interesting, you have folders called RB32SI, RB32UI, etc. Those define the various test virtual, machi test virtual machines and, the assembly and include inside those folders the assembly tests associated with those test virtual machines. Furthermore, inside each of those folders is a make frag that lists using uh, that, that lists which, test, which assembly tests are associated with those test virtual machines. Finally, in the ISA folder itself is a make file, which itself you should not have to open. Uh, calling make alone should be sufficient to, uh, as long as you've adjusted the make frag inside of the test virtual machines, calling make in the overarching make file should run everything for you. Uh, inside of the overarching RISC V test repository, we have two folders called MT and benchmarks. Uh, these contain some you can pretty much ignore these as these contain some old code and some old tests that we use that we're still cleaning up and moving over to the new environments. Now, presuming you've listened so far, you will likely wish to add your own assembly tests to the RISC-V tests. First, obviously, you must fork or clone RISC-V tests into your own private re repository. Next, 
determine which test virtual machine you want. For example, if you wish to test supervisor instructions, you'll need to use one of the S virtual machines, RB32S or RB32, RB64S. Or if you wish to use the vector machine, you'll need to use uh, you make, you'll need to make sure that you use either RB, one of the supervisor machines or uh, RB64UV. Furthermore, go into the directory in the repository associated with that test virtual machine in risc 5 test isa Then inside that directory, add the .s assembly file for your test. And then finally, modify the make frag inside of that directory to incorporate your test. A, sample make, a simplified make frag is shown here for RB64UI. Uh, if you wish to add a single core test, whereas you're only running on core zero, you would add it to the first list. And if you wish to add a multi-core test, you will add it to the second list. This will ensure, and then, and this will ensure that the rest of the build scripts properly build and then later execute your tests. Notice further down that uh, the, the specialness of the PM test environment in that only multi-core tests are, are compiled under the PM test environment, whereas only single core tests are used for the P, the physical, physical timer interrupts, and virtual tests. Um, some miscellaneous information from this repository is that in accordance with the target environment linker scripts, all test execution will begin at 0x2000. Furthermore, and this is, some, this is very relevant for if you're trying to do multi-core tests, the, at, before the core boots, the front-end server will write two pieces of data to memory. At the zeroth memory location, it will write the size of the memory in megabytes. And at the fourth memory location, it will write the number of cores in the system. Uh, finally, the RISC-V slash test slash ISA macros contains many uh, recipes for constructing individual assembly tests if you do not wish to write them all out yourself. With that, I'll go through one of the actual, one, an actual full test located in RISC-V ISA tests. Uh, first, you have um, some boilerplate license uh, next, you have the include right there, the risk 5 test for making sure we hook into the target environment. Second, test macros, because we wish to use some of the simplifying macros in risk 5 test slash ISA slash macros. And then finally, as shown earlier, an actual invocation of the test virtual machine, and then a, market, a marker that we are beginning the test code. Next, we have a bunch of actual tests that we'll run. Um, in this case, I'm, without explanation, using showing some of the macros from that the risk 5 test ISA macros, but the general format is the very first number is the test case, the second is some assembly code that is being tested, the next is the expected result, and the two are the, those are the two source, sources being written. The idea here is that if the test fails under whatever processor you're testing, the error code will be the failing test case. So these here are just testing uh, two source registers into one result register. And then here we have um, some bypass tests where uh, some no ops have been inserted arbitrarily in between these. And then finally we have some tests of the zero register as well. And then as before, we have a marker at the end to the test pass fail, which will include the necessary code to uh, post the error code to the front end server. And then finally, uh, the marker that we have finished test. And since this is a, just a simple assembly test, we do not bother with any test data or um, we do not bar bother with any test data or signature information. Finally, um, this has yet to be released. However, we plan to release it soon, sometime soon in the future. Uh, we are currently developing a RISC-V torture test suite, um, which generates random assembly tests using small little code snippets that are interleaved together and is able to run them over an extensive period of time. Uh, what with this, what this program does is it will run, will run Spike as a golden model, uh, emit a test signature, which is already pre-programmed to copy all of the state registers, uh, stuff in the vector machine, etc., into that test signature, and then test it against some other uh, test processor emulator, and then compare it for final results. Uh, that would be the conclusion of the presentation. I will be glad to help you with any of your RISC-V tests questions during the regular bootcamp lab session.